Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studios presented by Celebs.com up here at TIFF. Uh, Lenny Abramson, Jack Rayner. Uh, congratulations, guys. I mean, it must feel really cool to have the film playing here in the first place, but to have like this kind of warm response to it. Um, so you know, just kind of talk about how that feels for you as a filmmaker. Well, you know, when you make a film, you never really know. You don't, you, you can, you have a sense of what it is, but you don't really know how it's going to play until you put it in front of an audience. And actually the TIFF screening on Sunday night was the first time I've watched it with an audience. Um, and that's a big, a big one. You know, you, you, somehow you see it through other people's eyes in that context. And it's nerve wracking and it's very gratifying when it's when it, the film is understood you know that's what you really want you want people to see it the way you meant it and that seems to be happening it's a long way from studying physics back when yeah I, did, I, I came to film I mean actually the most bizarre route because I studied physics first then I studied philosophy in Trinity in Dublin I got a scholarship to do postgrad at Stanford in California where I decided I wanted to be a filmmaker and must have made the move in exactly the wrong direction from California to Dublin to pursue a career in filmmaking. Right. Come to California. Yeah. One of the characters in the in the film is wearing like a California t shirt. And I was like, these are, you know, Irish kids and you just have that influence that reaches so far. And Jack, I mean, you're going to LA after this and, and you know, from what we've read and, and that you just signed with William Morris and Deborah as well. So what's that like kind of riding that way? God, it's it's exciting times, you know. It's uh, just been since last year. It's just kind of been a bit of a trip. And can do you do you attribute it to the character? Do you attribute it to like just basically being able to spend so much time on screen as this guy? I guess so, because it's so incredibly focused on Richard, and I had no idea that was going to be how it was. Um, I think that kind of came in the edit, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess it's just the amount of exposure that I had to it. And you know, having Lenny directing you is, you know, you can't really ask for much more than that as a as an Irish actor. Um, so yeah, it's just worked out. It's a lot. The thing I like about the film is that it seems like it could really happen to anyone, because you seem like otherwise a good kid, Richard. You know, uh, the character and just a little bit of everything that everyone wants to do. Just maybe smoke a little, maybe drink a little, but this one particular night gets out of hand. Is that for you? Did you feel like maybe this? this night unleashed your inner character or was it an act that was kind of completely out of character? It was an act that was completely out of character. I think that that moment in the film doesn't define Richard at all as a person. Um, it's everything that comes later is what the, what defined him. Uh, he's somebody who, you know, at the, at the beginning he's driven by his morality, he holds that in very high regard. Um, and w after this thing happens, it's the disappointment in himself and the um, feeling of failure that strips away everything that he feels is positive about himself. And that's, I think, what defines Richard as a character. I suppose, you know, it's, it is, all of us can lose it. And the idea that, you know, people were saying, well, surely the Richard we meet at the beginning of the film, we should <coughs> foreshadow that he's got a kind of aggressive interior or that, that there are these sort of flashpoints. But actually that just makes him, that just means that the event that happens isn't so interesting. It's sort of predictable somehow. And what the film is about is it's about the degree to which good people are capable of doing bad things, which is a much more interesting story than, you know, bad person does bad thing. Right, so it would have been called like who Richard is rather than what Richard did. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, it's based on a book, Bad Day in Black Rock. Um, did you go after that book? Did you read it, go after it, and say, I want to make this a movie, or is it an opportunity that presented itself to you? Well, it, it was an unusual one, because most of the stuff I do is self-generated, but we, we are now in a sort of world where we're trying to look at material from outside of, you know, from books and from other sources. And the production company that I work closely with in Dublin, Element Pictures, they had optioned the book before I read it. They just thought it was interesting. They optioned it. Um, people have been talking about it, and then I took a read of it. And I just found, the, particularly this character, Richard, the book is, is focused on multi, it's a multi-strand narrative, so we spend time with different characters. I decided that what really, what stuck in my head was this character of Richard, who's this sort of, you know, golden boy, really lovely sort of kid who, about whom there are really high expectations, and, and he has those of himself as well. And to think about a boy like that, you know, when, when the world, his world comes crashing down, just felt very moving and interesting and, 
And so that, that was a starting point, and we developed it, myself and the writer, Malcolm Campbell, with the cast, and we took it in whatever directions we felt were most interesting, so we didn't stick rigidly to the book. Is that just the way of working that you prefer generally, or is that, was that just specific for the project? It felt, there are some ideas which when they come are kind of fully formed, but this was one where there was a sort of, I just had a, there was a sniff of something interesting, and therefore it felt like we needed to begin the process to, to, to find what that was and follow it. And also, you know, when you're making a film about teenagers and you're an older person, I know it's hard to believe when you, when you look at me. No, no, I just see the baseball cap and Thank, t-shirt. Thank you, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, it, but, but uh, you know, it's very easy to put words in the mouths of, of those characters and for them to bring very hollow. So really needed to spend time with the cast and get to learn the sound of them and let their lives and their stories inform what we did with the film. Do you think you'll have an opportunity to really travel and appreciate this film, given that both of you are like on the precipice of other things? You know, I mean, obviously it's exciting times for you moving to LA with this kind of representation behind you that you know could push you anywhere. And Lenny, with you being on the precipice of filming a film with Michael Fassbender and Donald Gleason, um, you know, and Michael's blown up. I mean, we had it. We talked to him when he was doing uh, the press for Hunger, and he turns up by himself for a chat, you know, and was. Those awesome. days are gone. And those yeah. days are gone. I mean, the guys in like half a dozen movies a year, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's amazing. For me, I won't have as much time to enjoy this film as I'd like. Um, it's being released in Ireland and in other places in October, but I start filming the new film in, you know, a few weeks after that. So it's. But it's, that's also incredibly exciting, and there's nothing, a filmmaker's never going to complain about having another film ready to go. I mean, I'm, but, I'm, but I don't want to let this one, you know, I don't want to, it's not like I'm just going to leave this one behind. I will keep doing publicity for it, and I really care about it, and I want to get it out into the world. I guess it's also cool that because you're having a high profile film come out, or a higher profile film come out later, people will come back and rediscover yeah, this one too. True. That's, that's definitely true. And actually, I think part of the reception for this film at TIFF has been, well, if I'm, you know, if, if people involved in a film are on the radar already, it just attracts a certain amount of attention and coverage, and that helps people get to know about the film and brings more audience in. That's right. They may have come to see this film because they heard about what you're doing next. I know. It's kind of a bizarre world. Yeah. What is it about Fassbender? I mean, obviously, we saw him in Hunger, and I thought it was the best film that came out that year, yeah. period. Yeah. But um, did you see him in that? And pursue him after that or have you kind of had to kind of well bizarrely enough for Frank um, it, it, I did a commercial with Fassbender like a million years ago before he was famous and and I was just making commercials in, and, and Michael was an, a, a jobbing actor but I remember at that time thinking there was something incredibly special about him um, and then I sort of watched his his rise and then meteoric rise but amazingly we didn't pursue him for Frank some what his agent read the script thought it was interesting showed it to Michael and so the first we heard of it was that we got a call saying Michael was interested in the part of Frank so that was that was fantastic and then it's just a process of meeting chatting seeing if we we both sort of think the same thing about it and uh, we do so so it goes forward it, it seems like it's a good time for making films in Ireland whether you're a horror film director or something else it, it just seems like there's a lot of product coming from there what is it is it a supportive film board or is it just ambitious filmmakers? It's probably a combination of both. I mean, Frank is a film out of the UK, but it does have big Irish support because there's myself, Donald and Michael, and we're shooting a big chunk of it in Ireland as well. But generally speaking, I think there's been a very supportive government policy towards film for the last number of years, and that's continuing even through the tough times. And it, it always takes a while, there's a sort of lag, when, when that kind of support comes on stream, it takes a few years before you start seeing the results of that, and I think that's what's happening now. People who are, people who've got stories to tell are thinking about making films as a way of telling those stories because, because that possibility is manifestly there. And, and it's just also a good time because there are just a few good filmmakers that have come at, 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 as a clump. And, and so, I mean, it's interesting you look at you know, Danish film, Romanian film, there are often these periods where uh, for whatever reason, just a, a group of people emerge at the same time, and maybe that's happening in Ireland. Jack, you know, having people like Fassbender, obviously, you know, Colin Farrell and stuff like that, kind of lay the groundwork, you know, going over to Hollywood and creating this global market for actors now. Um, 
you know, do you now continue to embrace the Irishness or do you try and downplay it so that you can, you know, cast yourself more wide? No, do you know what? I think that, <clears throat> I think that Hollywood responds very well to Irish actors. I think that it likes them. Um, I think, and I also think that all those guys, I think that, you know, with Colin Farrell and Michael Fassbender and John Reese Moyers and all those guys, they all have completely different styles. And uh, that's an important thing. Irish actors are actually incredibly dynamic, I think. Um, and I reckon, yeah, it's intimidating to go out there and know that there is Michael Fassbender and Colin Farrell and all those guys. And if you're going to go down that vein, that's the kind of people you've got to live up to. But... You know, we just take it one day at a time and try and get the next job and see where it goes. It's working for now, and uh, so congratulations so much on both of you and where, where things might be headed. It seems to be exciting times for, for, for the two of you, so thanks for taking some time out and joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.